All right, my homies, I want to take a look at the upcoming best of five, the first one of the quarterfinals, which is Samsung versus Longzhu. I'm going to start off with Samsung and talk about their story in the group stage. Their most impressive win was against G2, uh, which was fairly inactive for 15 minutes straight, and that has been the trend for Samsung as a whole. They took the game away very fast. They won 27, even though they faltered a bit in the early game against this late game composition when they had this kind of late, uh, like early game composition going for themselves. They had the Varus, the Tarek, and the Thalia. They could uh, skirmish very well in the early parts of the game, but uh, they didn't. For the first 15 minutes of the game, it was very inactive. They played against the Shen, so you could argue that that was uh, a part of it too. But this has been a trend for Samsung. Samsung... Uh, with ambition leading uh, the charge, uh, it seems like Samsung uh, and all casters tend to agree that Samsung want to play uh, towards that late game. They want to out-macro the enemy, they want to uh, set up those barons, they want to put themselves in a position where decisions matter. And that is where Samsung shine the most. Ambition, you know, leading his early game hasn't been too impressive. If anything, he's the one that gives away first blood the most. Ambition is a jungler that, um, sure, he puts the vision down, but usually he's not the one that forces any ganks or forces any pressure. If you compare him to, for example, Kondi or MLXG, these two junglers are willing to sit in a lane and pressure a lane for a very long time, even though the enemy team have information of him or uh, he might lose a camp or two. Uh, the other thing is, if you look at um, Samsung's uh, group stage story, uh, in most of the games, even in their most dominant victory against uh, D2, uh, we saw that they struggled in the early game. Uh, in their losses against RNG, they played against a similar kind of combo, th two games in a row, or two games, uh, not in a row, but uh, the two matchups, RNG versus Samsung, and then Samsung versus, R versus, versus RNG. And um, the same thing they ran into. It was the Galio, Tristana, Janna. Uh, the biggest issue for them in these games were that they got pushed in, bottom, and then Galio uh, was just uh, forcing the situation. Galio, Tristana, uh, Janna, they managed to get the first tower, and the response from Samsung was very vague. I think um, uh, to be so inactive in the early game is a big problem in the current meta, because the teams that look the most dominant, which to me right now is Longzhu and RNG, uh, seem to be very active in the early game. They tend to uh, make the rotations, they make, they tend to make the play to force that first tower at uh, a reasonable time, and uh, this is important to highlight when it comes to uh, the matchup stylistically. So the main strength, or the thing that we might believe is the kind of card of, um, you know, the win condition for Samsung, uh, is usually, you know, in the past, it's been like this innovation. They come in with uh, new picks. They come in with some surprising strategy. But I feel like um, that is a tough thing to do uh, against Longzhu. So when it comes to Longzhu, they've probably been the most impressive team in the group stage, even though they haven't had uh, the most uh, fiercest composition, com uh, like opposition. Uh, I think um, looking at Longzhu's group stage, they went 6-0 and... Um, they had that um, game against Gigabyte Marines, where Gigabyte Marines threw this Mordekaiser at them. Longzo adapted very quick and uh, went for the early game invade and uh, managed to set themselves up in a situation where they dove bottom. They adapted very quick and elegantly. And um, uh, even in draft, I feel like Longzo have had uh, an edge ever since, you know, w w watching them in, in the regular season as well. Uh, Khan... Khan's champion pool enables so much more. Uh, they are willing to play the tank side of it. They're willing to play the carry side of it, the top side. And, you know, arguably, Longzhu have the best player in every position. The The jungle position is the one that, uh, of course, uh, I would uh, disagree with myself with. But uh, four players in the best position. Kuve might be able to contest Khan. I don't think uh, Kuve is necessarily a top lane that's going to get shot on, on Khan. I'm sure there are people out there. I believe Kuve is better than Khan, and, and if you would tell me that, I think uh, it's understandable. So I feel like it puts them a kind of a stalemate. I think uh, if Longzhu decide to go for Jace pickups or something like this, I feel like 
that is where a risk might happen if um, Jace comes in and uh, I think Kuve is a top laner that could survive through that and uh, maybe they could uh, put Jace in a position where he's not that useful. So that is something that might be a way in. The main reason here is you know, Samsung. I talked about how they can come in with new strategies. You know, Longzhu, they have Praying Gorilla. And historically, whenever there's been a team with Longzhu, like with Gorilla and Prey in it, they've been very good at draft and very uh, innovative themselves. So I think this goes to say that uh, Longzhu, I don't think you can throw any curveball at, curve balls at them in draft, especially since the meta has been pretty uh, set for quite some time. I think, um, you know, all in all, I think uh, Longzhu is the clear favorite. I don't think Samsung is necessarily going to roll over and die. I think Samsung is still a fantastic team. These two teams, um, they drew the worst opponent they could have drawn, for sure. There, there, there's no question about it. And... Um, you know, Samsung being the best second seed and uh, Longzhu being the best first seed. So them facing each other is um, not what both teams wanted. But uh, in the end, you know, uh, I think Longzhu is going to take this away. I think uh, Longzhu have been very impressive in the group stage. And um, the main thing is that, you know, Longzhu, you could argue that the weakness is cuz, even though I think he's played played fantastically in the group stage the main issue here is that ambition is not a jungler that uh, would get the nickname the punisher so with that being said i think longzu is going to take it away with a 3-0 i think 3-1 might be a possibility if samsung bring up something new to the table but the lack of activity in the early game is a very dire thing for samsung and the games that uh, they've managed to win other games were uh, those games get draw get drawn out and uh, the enemy team is uh, not really uh, contesting them in the later parts of the game or they haven't taken a big enough early game lead. Samsung were very worrying against um, that match against Fenerbahce. They had Haru in the jungle, not ambition, but that game was also a very scary game that uh, put them on the back foot, put them on the ropes and eventually it put... Um, Samsung in a position where they pretty much needed to activate their late game decision making. And uh, in the current meta, I just feel like that's too hard. Longzhu are willing to play fast paced games. And I think um, Kaz is not a player that is going to be punished in this series. I don't know if Kaz is going to be punished at all in this tournament. I think uh, Kaz has been on point in his group stage, but the opposition in the group stage was not that great. So I think that summarizes the, summarizes the matchup very well. I think. Uh, Looking forward to this matchup, I think um, we will expect um, Longzhu to be more active in the early game, create situations. I think Talia will be contested as a pick. I think um, uh, Kuvion Choga has been incredible. I think we have to pay attention to the top lane. If um, uh, Khan decides to go for these uh, risky pickups that uh, have worked in the past and they've snowballed in the past, I think this is what we need to pay attention to because Kuve might be a way in. I think... Um, Prey and Gorilla should outperform uh, Ruler uh, and um, and um, Core JJ in the bot lane. And uh, I think Crown as well has been very underwhelming this tournament. I think Crown on Estalia was completely fine and it worked. Even though, you know, against Perks, he uh, did in fact have like a hard time trading against him, but eventually he took over the game together with his team. I think Crown has the right champion pool. He has played the game of Gallia, played the game of Malzahar, and in a scenario where it fits. Like, I don't think Malzahar is good every time. And um, also the Talia, and I think these three mid laners are going to be staple as we continue on in this tournament. So with that being said, I'll see you guys on the review day. I'm going to do them live. Well, I'm not going to do them live. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. Losing my voice because... It's tough talking, but I'm going to do them and upload them as we go. I'll see you guys before I lose my voice. Holy moly.